Oh, yeah, looking good. What's up? Can't compare next to this guy. <laughs> All right, what's up, guys? I'm Lewis from Blank TV. I'm joined by Greg from Dillinger Escape Plan. What's and up, dude? Stoked to be with you. I'm stoked, stoked for tonight. How's the tour so far, man? Excellent, man. We, we, we played like a secret show in New Jersey a couple days ago yeah. and then uh, for like 50 people. And then uh, we played New York City last night, which... Uh, Webster Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missed which, it, yeah. We, uh, we always love playing there. You know, uh, we're from the, this region, you know, so always New York, Philly, D.C., like those kind of cities are always we're like in, uh, favorites. Where in Jersey were you at? We were in uh, Ro in Rockaway. Like, no, South dude. We're, playing. we're from uh, we're from Rockaway. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. That's I went to high school in Rockaway. No, yeah, yeah, we, we, we uh, had a... Uh, we just rehearsed and we, we had people come in in the, in the spot that we, we've had the same rehearsal place since like 15 years or something like that. So we just had like 50 people come in and basically just kind of watch us rehearse and then uh, turned it into kind of like a mini show. And then, uh, and then yeah, New York yesterday and Philly today. So I'm excited to start off strong. So do you feel like you enjoy the smaller intimate shows or do you love the festivals? Oh, I'd much rather play these shows, man. Festivals yeah, are like a, it's like a commercial almost for you. But I feel like you're playing in a zoo aquarium or something you're like oh here's the stage and there's like 50 feet where there's like nobody and there's like you know photo people with you know with things and it doesn't it doesn't feel like you're like especially when you come from like punk and hardcore you're used to the energy of a, of a room like you know four walls and like having it packed with people and even a larger room is you know it's still enclosed it's a club you know like it feels it feels like what rock and roll or, or is supposed to feel like and then when you're in like a field and it's two in the afternoon and like just, I don't know. The only bands that really sound good in places like that are like Rammstein and like <laughs> Def Leppard and shit like that. Yeah. You know, like when we play those places, we sound like a screaming eagle. So. Yeah, man. So you love the intimate shows. Yeah, yeah I'd much rather. There's something so. about being able to break the physicality barrier where you can like j jump on someone or like grab someone or, and they can fucking, you know, you're just right there. The instant energy connection is so much better than being like, what's up, people that are 30 feet away? You know? <laughs> Hell yeah. So uh, speaking of intimacy, man, intimacy. You uh, is that you find the hardest part of leaving is leaving your uh, friends and family? You gotta. I don't have any friends or family. Oh uh, yeah. Dumps. I'm in the same boat, man. <laughs> no, uh, um, I really don't have that many, and and most of my friends are um, are people that are also in bands or you know or they're in the band that I'm in, and uh, I don't I don't live near my family anymore. I live in, in L.A., which is. Uh, from Baltimore, so my family is on the different coast, so um, I never really see them anyway. But uh, yeah, most of my friends, I find that I miss, you know, it's hard to make the transition from tour to home, and it's hard to make the transition from home to tour. Whatever totally. one you're on, you start to like be like, okay, like, I love this, I don't want this to stop. Inertia. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. When you're, you know, you've been on tour for two months, the end of tour, is, instead of being exciting, is actually really kind of sad. Yeah. Like, oh man, I gotta shift gears, and like, all my friends are gonna be gone, that I've just been not only spending every day with, but living with for two months, that's really intense, you know, and then you go home, and the same thing happens, you, you start to eventually get into another thing, and then you get ripped out of it again, and like, you just keep going back and forth. It sounds, it sounds so, uh, It keeps you on your toes, you know, yeah. it's stimulating, man, more than anything, and, and, uh, and, at this point, I don't know if I could stay in one place for too long. Yeah, because, stuck in this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you joined in, in 2001, right? Right. Right, and, uh, you know, all, uh, 12, 13 years later, you yeah, feel man. the same, you get the same feeling when you get up on stage? More so, man, because it's not as much, uh, you're not as nervous, you're, you're more excited. Yeah. You know, like when you're younger, you're like so nervous, you're still slightly unsure, you have a ton of energy, but you're not as focused with it. It's just like pouring out of you, but you're not channeling it like as intentionally. And uh, when, you're, when you're older, you, I feel like you have a little bit more of a, a command over yourself that you didn't have when you were younger. You understand where the energy is coming from, and you understand how to get to it, and how to, you know, um, how to tap into it a little bit more than having it just be a, a storm that you can't control yeah. as any younger. So, um, I was researching the band and you for the last couple of weeks. Okay. And uh, I was getting stoked for this interview, and everyone it begged me to ask you about that infamous reading. Oh, uh, right, right, right. Uh, um, do you want to, can, can you tell me the motivation behind that? Like, what was... Um, well, yeah, I mean, I was 21 at the time, and that was the first time we had ever played with bands that we felt nothing aesthetically in common with. Like, we were a band that just pretty much went on tour with other underground bands, and we all sort of shared a similar ethic and a similar kind of background, and then that was the first time where we were like, oh, we're playing a festival with, wait, Puddle of Mud's playing? And, like, there's, like, all these bands that we don't have anything in common with, and uh, we were playing at noon on, like, the first day of the festival, and no one knew who we were. You know, obviously, like a guy like Gigi Allen had done things like that to, to kind of make people uncomfortable, 
and uh, we really just wanted to, to piss people off and make people uncomfortable and draw some kind of comparison. You know, just just make people feel like we were saying before how you can't really connect with an audience of that size and that far away. So I wanted to do something as visceral as possible to make people have to engage, to make people have to be like, oh shit, I'm not just watching like you know fireworks and a and a, a band that's done this five thousand times. That there's real shit literally happening <laughs> like right now. Real you know? actual and, uh, shit. And yeah, you know, I, when you do that and uh, you don't really. I didn't realize it was going to be that big of a deal. We, you know, people ask me about it all the time. And when we go to to UK, it like was like a big deal over there. Like so, uh, they tried to deport us. Wow, they tried man. to tell us that we were never going to be allowed back. Like people were suing um, the, the festival promoters, saying that we violated like all these public <laughs> indecency laws and like they, <laughs> that they were experiencing like you know uh, trauma from having witnessed it and all this stuff. And I was like, that's Sues you? Yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> is it is but, it hard to like? Like, so, is it hard to like drop your pants and take a dump in front of that many people, man? I couldn't even. I mean, you know, <laughs> on a. I would like I would never be able to like. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. No, I don't. I'm. I. I didn't have a problem with it. <laughs> I'm an animal, dude. I'm, Hell yeah. Man. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. I didn't have a problem with it. it I barely remember. I don't honestly. have a problem with it, man. Like it was. It was so long ago that I remember. But I, I know that. Uh, you know, like I said, there was a point behind it. It wasn't like I was just like, oh man, I'm playing a show. And like, I have to take a shit. Let me. <laughs> no, I totally. I, I get the message. You know, I think there was that's a awesome point, so I was I was prepared for it ahead of time. Yeah. So it was it was kind of uh, anticipated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was I, premeditated. It was it, by about a few hours. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like I'm like, all right, I gotta start eating and drinking as much coffee as I oh, can. Oh god, man. You know, so that it'll, it'll be ready to go. <laughs> so uh, can we expect anything crazy tonight? Um, as far as I don't know if you're gonna take no, shit. that's not gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> I try to get rid of that before we play now. Oh good. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean every show is a is a fucking uh, anything could happen at any time. You know, well, like, we're, we're, steps, we're all man. pretty in the moment every every night, and like there's never a night that goes by that feels safe even for us on stage. There's always like at least one or two moments where you know I'm like, oh fuck, this is getting nuts, or Ben just did that, and that's you know like there's something. You know, always unpredictable. Even for us on stage, it still always feels kind of like shit. Could, it's like being on a train that is one mile an hour below going off the tracks at all times. You know, which is exciting. So. Right, just man. All right, well we're stoked. Dillinger Escape Plan. Right on. Thank dude. you so much. Thank you so much for giving. Hey, what's up? This is Greg from the Dillinger Escape Plan. You're watching Blank TV. Dangerous music for super dangerous, horrifying people. Thanks, man. <laughs>